you were a journalist first, then a sports photographer. I was a sports photographer first, first. then a journalist. Okay. Yeah, and uh, sports was always intertwined throughout my career. But uh, less so, and sports less so. is the same. I mean, you want to capture that dramatic moment. In fact, really, though, uh, a sporting event is all about creating those dramatic moments, and you kind of know where they're going to be and know when they're going to happen. And it's really a question of positioning yourself and. But you don't know when the, you don't necessarily you don't know. know. That's that's the challenge. I mean, you yeah. know they're going to be some, but is it going to be the? Well, that's true. Uh, is it going to be the strikeout? Is it going to be right. the single, the bunt? Is it going to be the error at second base? Is it going to be the outfielder? Um, is it going to be a fan catching the ball? Um, you know what they could be, but you ultimately don't know. And, and to your point, though, you only have one chance at it. And there is only one moment. Um, there's no debate on who won the game or who lost yeah. the game, game-winning home run. And if you, do, you have it or you don't. And that really prepares you for uh, being a, a photographer that covers news uh, in that you realize the importance of an, any event and being ready and prepared to capture it. Must be. Uh, was baseball your favorite? No, it was my least favorite because... It's all over I, the place, right? You I covered the Yankees and they oh, had yeah. the longest games and they would always go into extra innings and um, <laughs> you have to shoot every single pitch because it's the Yankees and so historical that um, after years of doing it, I think I've done seven or so World Series, maybe nine. Um, I don't know how many millions of pitches I've shot and um, it gets a bit repetitive. You know, uh, sports like football are significantly more exciting to shoot. Uh, and But you do have some uh, classic uh, shots of uh, Derek Jeter and, uh, and some Yeah, some sure, great, and Sam some Sosa, Yankee, Wire. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, great Yankee moments that uh, no one will ever oh, forget. Sure. But yeah. Um, I'm searching for some of your shots. Was it mostly for the Times? Or was it for Sports Illustrated? If you search for Sosa and LaFerre, maybe McGuire, some, there's some pretty classic moments Sammy there. Sammy Sosa. But, uh, or uh, the Olympics. I mean, I did, I did four Olympics. This is, an just, this is pre, pre, presaging your aerial photography. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This was the article that kind of changed everything. Um, uh, I think that's the article. But anyway, yeah, that, that's is. Sammy Sosa image. Uh, that I was uh, kind of hoping you'd find, which was to me the first image I ever made is supposed to taking. And what I mean by that is most of us as photographers are passive. We wait for the moment and we push the button. Whereas uh, the more uh, veteran photographers uh, are actually pre-visualizing and uh, not literally creating the moment all the time. And in terms of news and sports, you can't. But in this case, the angles from first and third base were really just not interesting. So the only angle to get at that stadium was from overhead. And I just love the way the geometry lines up perfectly between his body, the bat, and um, the foul lines, and, of course, home plate. So the geometry and then the, the precise moment. Did, where yeah. were you? <laughs> I was I was uh, up for 11 innings in the catwalk. Oh, my God. On one of the oh. hottest days in the Houston Astrodome. There was oh. 110 up there. And, oh. of course, it had to be extra innings. And this was shot on film. So for the entire wow. time, I didn't know if I had the moment. We couldn't chimp. Wow. You know, where you jump up and down and go, hoo, 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 I got the hoo, shot. Hoo. I got the shot. I got the shot. No. So you had to. I used the old uh, metronome trick. I, I, I was a musician as a kid. So I would time it. And uh, on the second oh. click, I pressed the shutter and hope my timing was on. So you don't even have, uh, uh, I guess in those days, motor wind at this point. You're just, uh, you're just trying they to They had that. cameras out there that 700 frames a second, and you still have only one or two frames of the ball in the frame. Wow. That swings pretty darn fast. So you got to time it. You get it or you don't. That's, that's the ultimate secret, I think, to not only sports photography, but also to photography in general is you've got to work yourself to a discipline where you just take one frame and you get it or you don't. It's, is it, it pre-visualization? Is that the key for you? Uh, for this image, yes. And, and since then, absolutely. Um, I think, you know, early on in my, in my career, I was much more of a reactive photographer. I enjoyed that aspect of it. I still do, uh, not knowing what you're going to get. Uh, I love going out with my kids and taking a, a camera and, and, you know, having little moments happen. But most of the time, you know, I've been doing this for 20 plus years now. I can really see the, image, the, the moments coming. And photography is ultimate, ultimately about anticipation and knowing people, knowing their habits, studying them, and predicting what's going to happen several seconds in advance. Those are the, what the best photographers do on a regular basis. They're, they're incredible observers. And um, they're seldom surprised at what happens, uh, you know, or if, if they are, they're already framed up and ready you know, for whatever is going to happen, and, and they get these incredible images. Are you born with that instinct, or do you learn it? Um, I don't know. Uh, I've always been a big proponent of hard work. Uh, yeah. I can tell you that when I was, you know, in my 
late teens and early 20s. I worked around Sports Illustrated photographers all the time. The company you saw there was called All Sport, and it's now part of Getty Images. But uh, those were some of the best sports photographers in the world. Uh, I was a young pup, and I what I noticed as a clear um, connection between both the All Sport photographers and the uh, Sports Illustrated photographers was that they were the first ones there, the last one out. Without exception, even you know John Beaver, who was a, a famed uh, Sports Illustrated photographer, um, you know he he could rest on his laurels, but he was there before we were, and he left after we did, and he was in his 60s or maybe late 50s at the time. But the point is, um, you have talent, uh, you cultivate that talent, you but there's just no no replacement for hard work, and that that tr- that works into directing and everything else I've done. I, I think you know we all work an insane amount of time and hours. Yeah. By the way, this is a great article uh, in Sports Shooter. You can find it on the uh, Internet, and that's exactly what you say. He says, uh, you write in the article, When I was 15, I was naive, naive enough to send my work over to ICP to ask Cornell Coppa for his advice on what to do with my career. He sent me a very kind handwritten letter telling me to keep at it. Things would inevitably happen. Fast forward to 19, the age of 19 in high school, 13 consecutive rejections during your <laughs> internship applications. Yeah. A half-hearted also- application to Reuters and the news yeah. pictures photo desk in D.C., and that's that was the click. Yep, it started everything, and uh, I was also rejected from the New York Times internship and eventually hired as a staff photographer. So, you know, I mean, I think uh, for people listening in, uh, you know, they I'm sure you interview people who generally succeed. Um, um, it's important to know that failure is a big part of success yeah. and that, you know, we don't talk about it enough, but man, 13, 13 rejections in a row as a freshman that hurt and, uh, it crushed me. And then on the 14th, I applied, as I said, half, as you said, half heartedly uh. for my writing and I got it. And that kind of, um, skyrocketed my career because I, you know, the, the reason I was getting rejected was not necessarily because my work was necessarily that bad. Uh, it had a lot to do with being a freshman and the fact that most papers didn't give internships yeah. to freshmen. You just so it out. felt unfair. Yeah. Uh, but I finally did get that break and that gave me a really big break to allow me to work a total of four internships in four years in college. So Reuters, the LA times, the Miami Herald, wow. uh, and, um, Oh, I forget. I'm too. T- I'm a little sick today, but that's what allowed me to get hired at the New York Times. And I think when I when I left the New York Times, they told me I'd been the youngest photographer ever hired at 25. Wow. So and you, they don't tell you that when they get hired. 